Supplements are often overlooked and they're way more important, especially in Splatoon 3, than you might think. So today I want to give you one tip for and against every single supplement in the game. If these tips help you, be sure to subscribe to see more Splatoon 3 content from me and let's get started. First up, the Splat Bomb. The main thing to keep in mind is the bomb's detonation time depends on how long it was on the ground. So if you want it to explode later, throw it high, and if you want it to explode fast, roll it low. This is especially useful if you're trying to drop the bomb over a ledge and give the opponents less time to react. Again, Splat Bomb. Keep in mind it's one of the best get off me tools in the game, and if you're diving, say, a junior player, they'll often throw it at their feet, so don't commit too hard, especially if you're using a slow up in like a blaster where jumping can get you killed. Suction Bomb is a neat trick that's been around for a while, which is that as long as a little bit of that suction bomb is peeking over a ledge, the explosion will still go through, so rather than telegraphing the entire bomb, try to hide most of it behind something like a wall and catch people off guard. The main thing to keep in mind against Suction Bomb is how long it takes to explode. That's your time to pick what you want to do before you have to get out of the area. Do you want to try to swim ahead of it? You can do it if you move fast, but if you hesitate, it might be a problem. Whatever decision you want to make, you want to try to make it quickly so it doesn't displace you for too much. My main tip for Burst Bomb users is to not just use Burst Bomb for yourself. Yes, it's an amazing combo, painting, whatever tool, but the main thing that makes Burst Bomb so good is how fast and quick it is to be able to deal reliable damage, and that's especially helpful to any teammate in a fight. See a blaster going for a target? Just throw a Burst Bomb at them. Easy damage for them to combo off of and paints over them so it makes them have a harder time dodging. This sub is way better once you start getting your teammates involved. Burst bombs can be quite tricky to deal with. Painting your feet when you get one thrown at you to be able to move quickly is definitely important, but for slower weapons it's especially important to keep track of the ink tank of burst bomb users and making sure they can't throw too many of them at you when you're approaching. Auto bombs need to be used more often. It's a nice location effect to check for enemies that can also paint and do damage, and on top of that it's only 55% of your ink tank, the cheapest of the lethal bombs, so you can throw them quite easily and often for pretty much every weapon that has them. Against auto bomb, keep in mind you can always detonate the bomb early by going near it. Once you're close enough, it'll stop moving and start exploding, and that can get rid of it instead of having to deal with the bomb walking toward you for like three seconds when you're worried about getting rushed. Fizzy bomb is the ultimate tool of versatility. It's cheap, can be charged up for extra damage in lingering hitboxes, can be used quickly for a paint trail. You want to be able to use all of these situations. Don't just charge and throw the bomb randomly all the time. Sometimes you want to use it for other options. Against Fizzy Bomb, even though good users are able to charge it fairly quickly, it does still require a little bit to get the sub up and off, and then it has to travel a bit before it explodes, so it's not really that great at stopping someone who's already on top of them. I like torpedoes, so you get three tips for this one. Number one, throw this at slower weapons or charging weapons. Things like blasters or chargers will have a lot harder of a time shooting it down. Number two, try to throw this closer to the sides or behind people than directly in front of them. It requires more effort and more camera turning to be able to shoot it down. Number three, actually use the roll or bounce mode. This prevents it from locking on targets, but it can go very far and is basically a giant burst bomb with a massive 35 damage radius that is great for comboing. Seriously, I had way too much fun with torpedo combos of the second half of Splatoon 2. Bring back Kensa Rapid. Against Torpedo, if you are a slow weapon I mentioned previously, play near something with a high fire rate, and if you're a high fire rate weapon, shoot down torpedoes for your teammates. I swear they will be eternally grateful. Last of our bomb sub-weapons is the bomb that's more like a utility sub, the curling bomb. Keep in mind that this is basically a mind game tool. You throw it and and people have to worry on if you're going to follow the path or not, and it's great for mobility options and keeping people worried about where you might go, especially for stuff like sploosh and roller with very little range. Mastering how to throw this bomb in threatening positions and know when to follow it is exceptionally important. Against curling bomb, keep in mind it doesn't really do too much. The bump damage is only 20, the explosion is tiny, and if they charge it for the better radius, they're going to be sitting there for a while and extremely vulnerable. Do not be afraid of it like it's an actual bomb. The key mistake I see with ink mine users is putting them too far back to cover flanks, but putting it in spots that are so far away that sometimes people never walk into them. You want to place it in spots where the enemy will actually walk into so they can get tagged and located before they get really close to the flank. Against Inkbind, if it starts to go off, keep in mind you can parry it. It won't stop the location effect, but it will prevent all damage. My advice for Toxic Mist is to actually not use it too much. Because the sub doesn't paint or do damage, a lot of times it's not worth the ink cost. If you're throwing it, it needs to be to a point where the effect the mist is going to provide is going to be worth that ink cost. Just throwing it somewhere random you think someone might walk into only for them to completely ignore it is not worth it. Against toxic mist, it's mostly knowing your ink tank. The better you are at ink management, the more ink you'll have to be able to fight in toxic mist before having to move. And it's also worth keeping in mind squid roll is incredibly effective against this sub. Point sensor is incredibly basic, so all 
all you really need to do is throw it in key choke points or under ledges. These are all common sharking spots or areas where you'll find multiple people, giving the sub a bit more value. Against point sensor, most weapons don't actually mind being located that much and can just play a little bit differently to be fine, especially mid to long range stuff where their location will be more telegraphed anyway. But if you're something like a frontline weapon and you get located, if you can't flank as much, make sure you're not just waiting for it to end. Do other productive things like painting or poking bombs. Splash wall users, learn how to jump off and throw wall on tower so it lands on it reliably. It is a classic skill from day one of Splatoon 1 and it is still incredibly valuable for that mode. You're basically just jumping backward and the wall will travel at a very similar speed to how you jump back and that'll allow you to get it on there. You can also learn common bounce spots to be able to get the wall on tower without having to get off it for a little bit. Again, splash wall. If you are an ink efficient weapon with a bomb or a mid to long range weapon that does damage, you are responsible for breaking it. Create as many 2v1 situations against wall weapons, especially 52 as possible. For using sprinkler, keep in mind it has a decent sized hitbox and a little bit of HP, so it can be used to tank damage a little bit if you throw it on your feet or near a wall you're shooting at, and that'll also paint the area around you to make it easier for you to move. Against sprinkler, if it's in an irrelevant location, sometimes you can just leave it. It's not worth going for a sprinkler in a very random spot when it's going to barely paint after a bit of time anyway, and it's only going to take more time from you doing more valuable things. For squid beacons, please put them spread out along the map. The closer they are together to each other, the easier it is for enemies to take care of it. Part of the big strength with the sub weapon comes with the ability to spread them out at a large distance and make the enemies have to spend a lot of time getting rid of all of them. Against squid beacon, this might only apply at higher ranks, but beacon's location effect that it can use to reveal you when you're near it is really valuable. So if you're going against a beacon user, they might often be checking their map to see if people are near the beacon, so try to break it at a safer distance if possible. Finally is line marker or angle shooter, one of the hardest and most undertuned sub weapons in the entire game. The main thing you can do to get more consistent value out of it is throw it along the floor so the tripwire covers as much area near people as possible to increase the chance of locating them. And outside of that, I would say actually don't go for the combo as much, unless if you're a bucket user, it doesn't really save that much time. Against line marker, keep in mind the damage it does isn't actually that bad, so unless if it's a weapon that specifically combos with the 30 damage, you don't have to be too worried about getting tagged by it if they do manage to get a straight hit on you. And if you're running away, you'll often heal enough to prevent people from comboing you if you do it fast enough. And with that, we have a tip for and against every main, sub, and special weapon in the game. Obviously, more of them will be added in the future, so one day I'll do a little bit of an extra one, adding on to all of these or maybe redoing it if it's been long enough. But for now, I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you all later.